Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. So and this is this is another gift from Harry Sussman. A whiskey. No, Not this. sure if he has financial interest in three quarter. You know what that is? Hmm. Super sus. Yeah. Man. Just asterisking the magnificent. Super master. sus. Not sure. Man. Not sure. Just not really. Sus. Man. Man. So. Magnificent? Airy Sussman, you asterisk question mark. Magnificent. Bastard. I think he comes clean in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> this is batch one. So remember I said that the three chord guys yesterday I said were um, m blending, mostly sourcing and blending? Yes. What they said was every once in a while we get a barrel in that's so good, we're like, just bottle it. Don't f with this one. Right, right, right. Yeah. So this is so probably fifteen just... year old Kentucky bourbon. Damn. It's not really a single barrel, I don't think, because they've got a thousand bottles from this release. So maybe so that they got like a batch. At yeah. least my guess would be four five. or five barrels yeah. based on that age statement. Yeah. Probably five barrels at yeah. minimum. Yeah. But but fifteen year old mm -hmm. Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we don't know where in Kentucky, but. Because Ryan Gill told us that they're sourcing a lot from Barton, my guess is that this is 15-year-old Barton. Hmm. Okay. I wonder if they blended them all together and didn't do like Just dumped five. Yeah, yeah, I think it's they dumped five. Yeah. Into a single release. Oh, a total of 2,500 bottles were produced. But that... Wait a minute. No, wait, wait. This, this one says of 1,080. Maybe they did a couple of runs and they had a few different releases. This is batch one. By the way, you probably hear that. You hear that noise? That's the welders. Yeah, and the grinders. They're grinding. Wow, this is dense, but not woody. Yeah, and what's I'm not getting the oak on uh, that. The proof is not going to be on the floor. One yep. seventeen. There it is. Proof. Yeah, it's fifty-eight, almost fifty-nine percent alcohol. Yeah. So this that, is um. It's basically cask, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they it's, they take it right out of the barrel and put it in the bottle. That's pretty cool, right? Just yeah. owning it. I'm, there's like a leathery quality to it. Which you don't get in younger bourbons yeah, that I can. Not oak. I'm not getting over oaked. There's Nuts. definitely there's definitely honey. It is it, presenting more as leather than oak. Yeah, leather. It's, it's all, you know what words? It's kind of like this half step between leather and rubber. Yeah, you there is a that? phenolic note. Yeah, and then uh, a little bit of almond roca on mm. the top end of that nose. Toffee and chocolate. Yeah. Ooh, there's the dryness. It is all in the palate. It just explodes in caramel and then immediately vanishes in the tannins and oak and leather. And it goes for days. It's still going. Ooh. Now it's turning into chocolate. Yeah. Honey and then chocolate for me. Mmm. Wow. That's an experience. No wonder you tried that and was like, hey, we should release these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is nice. 15 years. That's always fun. Man, I don't know who's doing three quart, but I like their palate. Mm -hmm. Of the two things that I've tried, They've got a good palate. And going back to the nose, that almond roca is becoming even more apparent. That toffee, that chocolate, maybe some nuts on top. Yeah. I like that. We have almond roca in here somewhere. Yeah. I remember you pulled it out. Yeah. A few months oh, well. ago. That's pretty damn good. I like that. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a damn good 15 year old bourbon. Mm. I kind of want to put that in a locked cabinet over there just as like a, here's an age statement bourbon that you might. Are you rarely going to get to experience? The lock cabinet's already pretty full. And it's very full. Yeah. No, your house is not going to be an option. In case you're what? There. what was? Oh, I would never. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mikey's world. And for you to believe that about me. <laughs> How dare you? By the way, my wrist is kind of sore. I slept on it weird. Oh, all right. It's like. Every time I reach for something, there's this little bit of a pain right across the middle of the bones. Are, like, we, ah. are we really playing the soreness game? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to see if I could. Are we really playing this? It does actually is a little sore, yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking more than usual. <laughs> just For just, medication? Just to make the pain go away. <laughs> uh, Uncle Maggie's world. I imagine there's got to be some kind of legal agreements. But as any scotch actually told us, what bourbon was in the barrels that they used. Uh, yes, actually. So not regularly, because actually some of the big guys have contracts where they own the forest, harvest the wood, age the wood, make the barrels, lease them to bourbon distilleries. Wow. And then take them back to Scotland when the bourbon guys are done with them. 
that was just a guarantee they always had access to the quality barrels they wanted. Yeah. And they went, that's, you know, what's a smart play. Yeah. They went upstream. Yeah, they did. And they made a deal with the bourbon guys like, hey, you need it for virgin oak, mm -hmm. which is their version of, you know. Yeah. First fill. But we need it after that. And we need it after that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but often uh, in the smaller guys will say things like, this is Heaven Hill, bourbon mm -hmm. cask, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't know what, often get them. Uh, and here's why. And my memory serves, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go from memory here, mm -hmm. is that not all barrels are the same in a barrel house. So it's not like you can say something like, McAllen, if they use bourbon, it's Heaven Hill. Right. Or if they use bourbon, it's Beam. It, sure. It, you can't. It's it's more like we buy bourbon barrels, right? And you're gonna be, if they're gonna be blending those anyways mm -hmm. to achieve continuity, right? There's no sense in naming a particular. Yeah, particular because bourbon. then you're honestly you're misleading the consumer. Right. Oh, this is the Willet. I wonder what it tastes like. This like, could no, be this, is like, this could be Willet or Jim Beam or Barton or yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're gonna blend them together, so it's kind right. of yeah. Rabbit hole. Oh, the uh, yeah. Rabbit hole replied to our rabbit hole review that we did. Wait, two years ago? No, no, no. It was a couple weeks. We did a, a cherry cask finished rabbit hole. Remember? Gerberdor? <laughs> Gerberdor? Yes. 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 I, yes. Yeah. Thanks so much for trying this out. So happy you guys loved it. Open invitation to the distillery here in Louisville. Right. To get the lowdown on all our products, processes, finishes, anytime we want. Cheers. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. I am pleasantly surprised about how Overly oaked, this is not. Yes. 15 years. Yes. I, I, for some reason, it took me a second to process that. Yes. Because I'm thinking... The leather is strong and the dryness is strong. Right. But it's not wood char. 15 years, that's kind of a tipping point. Still pretty subtle. I mean, even in like 13 years, you're going to yeah. start to get some oakiness that feels a little too heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. 15 years, this doesn't feel like it's even close to getting overly oaked. No, it really doesn't. But yeah, nice, uh, rich... Sweet flavors, and if anything, I kind of wish there was a little bit more oak in there. A but little more I, bite? Yeah. It is soft, it, even I, with the leather. But I think I'm even more just impressed that yeah. it doesn't get overly oaked at 15. It's subtle. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's hearts. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.